Hello and welcome to ICT and Computer Science with Miss Price. So today we're going to look at data transmission again but we're going to go a little bit more deeply into it. So today's modern internet, what do you do on the internet? How do you use your phone? I've asked you to think about these things before. We rely so heavily on it. One time, for example, is all you would do was send emails. Now, we call, we watch videos, we video call each other. So there has to be a way that this data is transmitted. Now, there are two ways that we're going to look at. One is synchronous and the other one is asynchronous. Do you know what either of those are? Can you answer that question? If the answer is no, please continue to watch this video and learn. Don't forget to subscribe. So once again, we're going to dive straight in. No big long introductions, here we go. So firstly, we're going to look at asynchronous data transmission. Now, this is how data transmission was made possible to begin with. Um, this means data is transmitted simply on an agreed pattern. So there has to be an agreement between the two computers and it has to be sent. So the data is simply ones and zeros. Okay, so as I've said to you before in my other videos, when I say the data, you think of a bunch of ones and zeros. And now, these ones and zeros have to be grouped together and then they're sent. So therefore, there has to be a start point and then there has to be a stop point. So that's why sometimes asynchronous data transmission may be referred to as start and stop transmission. So here's an example. Um, we've got our first, you know, we've got our control bit here, the first bit. Then we've got the end bit. So when this data is transmitted and grouped together, there's a start point, there's a stop point. So characteristics of asynchronous data transmission um, is quite simple. Now it doesn't need to work on clock speeds. So these can now obviously be the, um, the speed that your internet may work at and you know the speed of your processor and so on. Okay, because um, the, the data can be transmitted intermittently. It doesn't have to be trans, um, you know, transmitted on a continuous regular speed or regular interval. Okay, so it doesn't work on clock speed at all. So that's quite beneficial. Um, the data is not transmitted at regular intervals. So therefore, it, this makes the variable rate possible. So, for example, when I transmit data to somebody, like send an email, for example, um, they may not be there to pick it up, or um, maybe their computer doesn't work as fast as mine, but it doesn't matter, because once it's sent, it's sent. It's not relying on the clock speed. So, um, the clocks don't have to be synchronized, so that's great. And every character is proceeded with a start and stop bit, so it's very, very simple. The data gets to the other end uh, to be received very quickly and very efficiently. And obviously the space between each character is a common because there is an agreed pattern it has to be sent. So here's an example. Um, uh, emails are still very commonplace in schools, in workplaces and so on. So emails um, are a simple um, example of asynchronous data transmission because um, as you may know um, emails are sent in packets so each part of the packet is broken down it's assigned um, a part of undress and it gets put back together at the other end so therefore that is the agreed data transmission right so now moving on we have asynchronous now Synchronous data transmission works the exact opposite way of asynchronous uh, data transmission. So now, the reason why you may have already worked out, I'm hoping that you may have already worked out, is why we need synchronous data transmission. Because we rely so much more on communication and our devices. So think, what do you use your tablet for? What do you use your laptop for or your desktop? 
What do you use your smartphone for? So we need synchronous data transmission to keep up with modern times. So we have to have a continuous stream of data. So you're thinking, why do I have to have a continuous stream of data? Well, most of us these days will listen to music on places like Spotify. Um, or maybe you listen to music on Amazon and you listen to all this stuff online. So that is a continuous stream of data that we need. So here's an example here. So here's asynchronous. Okay, so you can see here these people are sending emails to each other. And then here's synchronous. So you can see this is a continuous stream of data that goes all the way through continuously. So here is the characteristics of the synchronous data transmission. So it is going to work the exact opposite way of asynchronous and thinking about the pictures that we're looking at. Now it transfers data on a continuous stream, constant, okay? So there is no intermittent patterns, there is no irregular intervals. The data has to be streamed continuously for the person that needs it as long as they need it for. Um, so the timings have to be generated by external clocking mechanisms. Um, whereas asynchronous doesn't need the um, external clocking mechanisms at all. So it ensures that the data for both the sender and the receiver is synchronized because if it isn't, then obviously there's going to be lagging, there's going to be delays, um, poor picture quality and so on. So the data is simply is sent as frames or is sent as packets. So it works sim similar in that way to asynchronous data transmission, but we do need the regular streams. So as you can see, that as um, technology's moved on and as things have moved up in the world, um, that what they've done is, is they've basically thought, right, okay, using synchronization, we can make these work at regular intervals. So how does it work? Well, the clock signal is predefined because we need the constant, reliable data stream. So the data time is actually time sensitive. Um, because, for example, if you're FaceTiming somebody, we don't want to wait 10 seconds. We don't want to see, like, for example, um, someone's... I mean, you may see this on the news, for example, because there is a bit of delay. So when they're actually talking to someone live on the news, they may ask them a question. And then if you notice, there's always a pause before they actually um, answer them. So um, now the data have to be set into blocks and then they're separated and spaced regularly. So it goes constantly at regular intervals. OK, so there's no um, there's not necessarily any control bits from start and stop. So the timings have to be very accurate. So that would be your start and stop. Now, try to think of some examples of this. OK, and I hope you thought of some already because um, synchronous data transmission we use it all the time. Okay, so for example, voice over internet protocol. So when you're actually making a phone call on, um, is you know, very, very straightforward example that people use all the time is WhatsApp. So when you're actually phoning somebody on WhatsApp, you're not using your regular phone line. Um, you are using your data and you're using your internet to make that phone call. And obviously, when you make that phone call, it works just the same as when um, you use your regular phone. Okay, so that's where the timings have to be synced up. So that's where the clock speeds and the transmissions are agreed. So therefore, you can actually speak to that person. But I don't know if you've ever used WhatsApp, and I have at times when um, obviously there is a lack of synchronization and sometimes it fails. Um, video conferencing. So, for example, when you may speak to someone on FaceTime, when you speak to somebody on Skype and you can see their picture, that is video, con um, video conferencing. And that's where we need a regular, again, a regular stream of data so you can see that person and you can talk to that person. And basically, the, the data streams regularly, so, you know, in real time, so you actually uh, both receive the data. And... Of course, video um, streaming. So if you use Netflix um, or any other type of uh, video streaming service like Prime Video, 
then again it's a regular stream of data because you haven't downloaded that video um, because obviously it would take space on your drive it take a very long time to actually download um, videos usually so what we like to do is, is we like to go onto something like our Netflix account press play and that video is streamed to us directly now um, I hope now you've become confident with the difference uh, between asynchronous and synchronous um, uh, data transmission so thank you for watching um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel it would be very helpful for you to do so um, and like my videos because I am going to be uploading every week and teachers please visit my shop on TESS where there will be um, resources uploaded weekly at very cheap prices um, follow me on Twitter and don't forget to click on a link in the description to download the free activity which you can um, do as homework if that's what your teacher has set you as homework or you can simply do for your own revision and obviously to make sure that you're gaining better grades. Very best of luck, look out for my next video.